Some of hard too. Okay. Yes. With the grand execute, uh, with the grand, uh, let's say the grand, the grand take. Yes. Okay. Let's say it's the first time when it executes is four. Okay. So let's say R two is now four. But if the branch is taken, it go back to execute is eight. That means whatever was in the branch, uh, the branch delay slot was wrong. No, 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 no. Before the store double was just above the branch. Mm -hmm. That's what the only the only difference is we've taken what used to be here and we moved it down to here. It doesn't change the computation one iota. But this, look at it though, Dr. Moore. Look at you said the store was in front of the branch, right? None of the branch is front of the store because of the branch delay slot, right? Yes. Look at that R1 value. That R1 value can change. But it's not changed. It's only changed way up here. And by the time you get down here, it doesn't matter. It's already changed way up here. Uh, now, what if, what if, um, if you move daddy, if you move daddy, if you move the daddy, yeah. move move the daddy too close, yeah. remember you, you can have dependencies, you can have dependencies on the branch registers themselves. Right. I haven't shown any of that. Okay, uh, there's all kinds of possible dependencies. But in this case, the only difference is, I took the instruction that used to be here, Mark. put it into the branch delay slot, and it's always executed. You see where the word is? Dr. Morris. Yes. It's, it's one thing that's got me confused now. You didn't went over this a hundred times, but I need to ask you once more. What, the word. The word is always going to start off with R0, then R1, then R2, right? I, I, think, she, I think she's trying to, she just, she's trying to understand the, when say dot word. You mean the data section part. and the code section? The word. Yeah, so, okay, so everything above dot code is called the data section because it has the dot data yeah. assembler directive, okay? From the dot code directive down, that's the code segment, all right? So this is essentially from here up is you can think of this is not quite right, but you can think of that as being your data cache. Okay. It's not quite right, but you can think of it that way. And from here down, you can think of that as being your instruction cache. Okay. It's not quite right, but it's close enough. Okay. All right. So this is in the I cache. This is in the D cache. All right. That's a way to think about it. Now, right. my question is, well, you know how we get to the code and we do like R zero. Is th does that reflect num the, the number one? Which, I'm not, I'm not okay, but we was going to add that code I up through. It was going to add it all the way through. R1 would be one, right? In this case, R1 corresponds to the index register. So I take what's in R0 always. What's in R0? Zero. Zero plus, because it's an immediate. Mm -hmm. I take 16 plus zero which is 16, and I put it in R1. Exactly. In this case, the function of register R1 is to serve as the base register, or the index, if you will, for walking this array A. All right? And in this case, it's starting at the bottom. So what, what R1 contain? 16. So what's 16 plus A minus 8? Eight. 8. Let's see if that's true. So what's A? One. No, it's zero. It's the zeroth element of the memory. Okay. Okay? So A is in the data segment at memory location zero. Okay. So A is zero. So A minus A plus 16 is? Eight. eight. So what's, what's at address eight? Eight. No, the number two. Because the number one is at location zero, then eight bytes later at location eight is the number two. Remember, 64-bit data memory. All right. So location zero, location eight. Location okay, so 16. 16 okay, that, that, that's that, what I come. That, okay. Okay. So in this case, we're walking backwards through the array. All right. So you take, you put into R2 the number two. All right. You then decrement the index. So now that instead of the index being 16, the index is now 8. All right, I double what was in R2 
by adding R2 to itself. And then I, then I do seemingly counterintuitively the branch here. But remember that the store double always executes because on this hardware, it's in the branch delay slot. So even though the BNE is working here, no matter what the branch says, this always executes. And I take whatever's in R2, that is to say twice what it used to be, and I store it back into A R1. Notice that the displacement here and the displacement here are different because I've decremented the index in between. And that's what we went over the other day when we were talking about a load hazard. So I understand now, it won't change the value. So basically what you're doing is just rearranging the instructions. I'm, re I'm rescheduling the instructions. Like we know, yeah. That was the branch yes. delay slot. Branch delay slot involves rescheduling the instructions. Okay. So that you fill like yes, yeah. so that you fill the branch delay slot, hopefully with useful work, but at least if it can't be useful work, it's work that you can either undo or that doesn't hurt anything. Right? And the store is always, always safe for that, right? Because it's just basically storing it at uh, a different time. In this time. case, the store was safe to do. I wouldn't make a general statement, though. Okay. Yes. Uh, does the compiler check that it, it doesn't uh, branch in this slot, doesn't hurt the, it? Uh, yes, the compiler does all of this. Okay. Yeah, it's going to take your C or your Fortran or your whatever, mm -hmm. and it's going to produce the assembly language and it's going to figure out what the dependencies are, and it's going to figure out what kind of instruction to push into the branch delay slot, of course. You know, it would be rare for a human being to sit down and, and do that with assembly language code. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, it does. If you're doing like DSP code where it's got to be nice and tight, you know, you're trying to you know, fit a few thousand lines of code in some embedded ARM processor, you know, for your little whirly gig, you're flying around, you need the code to be quick, so you're not going to take some nasty Fortran or C and get a good, you know, real nice performance necessarily. It's getting better. C compilers are getting pretty efficient, but still. It's cool. All right. I want to talk about the homework assignment a little bit here. Okay. Um, I think this is the new homework. You, I, I'm going to have to look. I can't remember what I've done with the homework this go I think this is the, I think this is your new homework or something. I kind of, I kind of got... Uh, yes, it's very similar to this. So let me see. Yes. Uh, uh, good, good. So it's, yes. It's the problem number five, all right? Problem number five. It's, it's a similar kind of a thing, all right? <laughs>